Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. John Belkowitz here, Intelligent Concrete. I hope you're having a fantastic start of your week. We're getting back to these vlogs, or we have another video for them. Uh, but this, will, the direction that we're going with these is we're separating it like we used to, and today's vlog is gonna focus on uh, putting sequestered carbon into concrete. I was gonna say back into concrete, but just into concrete. Uh, and, and this is something that I've been asked a lot about, and there's a few companies that are coming out with different methods of either injecting in, saturating, or creating a concrete that that draws in more CO2. Um, and I just wanted to go into that today. So yeah, let's dive into it. I've got some great notes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to make this not such a long video. I wanted to get direct to the point, but I wanted to define it first. What does it mean? When we're putting sequestered carbon or just CO2 back into concrete. And that's the very idea that I, I love to think about this. And I really do like this idea. Um, you know, concrete is one of the world's best garbage cans. We can take some waste materials, whether it's, it's hazardous, non-hazardous, uh, reactive, non-reactive, and we can put it back into concrete. I've seen nuclear waste, waste fofs of gypsum, crumb rubber, plastic, old concrete, metals, uh, uh, toilet bowls, you know, a, a lot of things thrown back into concrete. And if you weren't there the day it was placed, you would never know. Uh, that being said that you can put anything into concrete, but some things have, will have a negative impact, especially on the service life and the way the concrete can be resilient to physical and chemical attack. So let's getting into, let's get into what sequestered carbon is. And I hope I'm saying that. I feel like I'm saying it right. Uh, but if I'm wrong, please, you know, comments below. Um, so the very idea is, is that instead of allowing the CO2 to escape out into the environment, we capture that CO2, we reclaim it, and we turn it into either a, a reclaimed gas or reclaimed liquid. And there's a bunch of technologies that are out there all over the world, so I don't want to comment on anyone. I'm not showing any favoritism here. But once you capture that, then what we're going to do is either inject it or mix it into the flesh, fresh or fluid concrete. The second way is to saturate hardened concrete with it, specifically saturated in some type of a pressurized chamber. And the third way is creating a hydrated cement matrix that has a tendency to draw in more CO2. All three of these, I think, are, are wonderful, and they all play on the fact that concrete is one heck of a garbage can, as I've already said. Um, and I love the idea of contributing to this, this increase in our sustainable efforts. I really do love it, especially when it's not letting that CO2 out into the atmosphere. I absolutely love that. And the benefit that we see out of it is, I think, is twofold. Um, I've seen a bunch of research and I'm just trying to truncate it, but you know, once we do draw this CO2 in or we saturate it or we inject it into the fresh concrete, you have that CO2 that combines with available calcium hydroxide to create more calcium carbonate, which is great. I really love that. What we can see out of that in some cases is increased strength. And then there's some lovely research on the West Coast that shows that um, by reducing our calcium hydroxide content, we have a tendency of reducing the formation of calcium oxychlorides that we normally see on our pavements from de-icing salts and brines. Again, awesome stuff. Um, the reality is we end up seeing something different. As far as I know, the three things or the three ways of getting carbon or CO2 back into concrete, which was injecting into fresh concrete, saturating it in a pressurized environment, or creating a, a hydrated cement matrix that draws in more uh, CO2. The only one that I know of that's being used commercially is injecting that CO2 into fresh concrete. Again, it, it's being done all over the world by a few companies. And again, I, I, I really love, I love the idea of it. Um, 
I just feel like from the stuff that we've seen, you know, when I say stuff, let me define it. From our ready mix producers that we've worked with, our finishers, uh, and some of the universities that, that we've worked alongside that looked at some of this data with using this, you know, injected CO2, uh, we don't see the positive intact, I I impact that we would normally see in the lab. We don't see it in the field. As a matter of fact, when we're using this technology, we are seeing uh, a softening of the concrete surface, um, you know, excessive from excessive bleeding. Um, you know, it's, it's similar, the way I can explain it best, and I, I was thinking about this all weekend, how to describe it. It's similar to when we first started using steel fibers uh, in concrete, where you know people got excited, didn't you know, didn't want to use either steel mesh, or or, or e even to some cases didn't want to use steel fiber. So they were putting you know bags and bags of these steel fibers, and what it ended up doing is creating a very bony and chunky concrete, where the uh, finishers to close up the surface either had to put more concrete into the back of the truck or bless the surface, and ended up. You know, you have a product that is specifically designed to increase the concrete toughness, and because we're using it in the wrong way, it ends up causing the concrete to break down even sooner. And I think that's where we're at, that the, the general concept of putting CO2 into concrete is fantastic. I love it, but the execution of it, um, it still needs to be tailored, and it still needs to be optimized. Uh, and I'm excited. I'm excited to see that happen. I think this is... This is a great idea, but I think we need to pull back on the reins a little bit. Um, you know, with you know, sometimes we can be too excited about something and try to get out to the industry too quickly without really you know creating a good foundation of standard operating procedures. I, I've done it many times myself in this lab that sometimes I get so excited to get the technology out there that I don't really think about the hurdles and obstacles that I'm going to create for myself. And the problem is, is our industry, uh, our, our industry holds a grudge. And, you know, if, if you push too hard on a technology uh, and it ends up creating a bad taste in the mouth uh, of our entire industry or parts of the industry or segments, uh, it, it might be very, very hard to uh, keep going down that road. And you might find that the resistance will turn from early adoption into pushback. And that's what I don't want to see. Again, I, I do appreciate the concept and I love the idea that we're putting such an effort to it, but I think we need to crawl before we walk uh, and identify uh, multiple ways of taking advantage of this. Just, just putting all of our eggs in one basset to get this CO2 reduction of concrete. You know, uh, there's a uh, cement company, Lafarge Wholesome, that is, le and this is not a paid advertisement, but is leading the way for creating these 1157 cements. And there's Lehigh Hansen. They're doing a great job too. Um, there's some great, great other ways to go about this reduction of CO2 in a concrete mix design. As much as I love putting CO2 back into it, I, I think that there needs to be a little bit more work. And that that's not necessarily a bad thing, we don't have to abandon all hope. There are other alternative supplementary cementitious materials, as well as these 1157 cements or these performance-based cements that we can start using now to a higher degree and still make you know, some forward movement in this effort. So please don't take this in the wrong way that I think that, oh, it's a terrible idea to put CO2 in. No, I don't think it's a terrible idea. I think it's a great idea, but I think it's a great idea that needs a little bit maybe even a lot of bit of work. So um, thanks for joining us. Hope you're doing well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go concrete, beat asphalt.